Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you see, the reason I'm here today is because I believe I've got an idea worth sharing. I so passionately believe in this idea that I want to present it to you all today. And then I hope and I pray that you leave this room and you go and share that idea that I have. And this very idea is happiness. It sounds so simple, but I want to spread happiness around the world as fast as I physically can. Now, to give you a brief synopsis of my career, is I started out, as the uh, lovely gentleman said, as a party clown, as a children's entertainer when I was just 15 years old. And I thought I was in the business of providing birthday parties. But what I really quickly realised was I was in the business of providing happy memories for families. That's what I was doing. Uh, and it became a very being of my heart, body, mind and soul. I then went on to build a big business from it and I learned that the more happiness I spread the more it comes back to me I realized that happiness is like a circle and the more I give off the more you give back and that's what's so fantastic about it you see if I look at this gentleman here and I make him smile he gives me a little smile and I feel great inside I want to make him smile more and then you're happy then you're happy then you're happy look at the lady is smiling I mean she's so happy that energy is radiating from me I want to give you more energy even that man at the back that spent all day doing his hair and left it at home is now happy that he spent all day doing his hair and he doesn't care that he's left it at home. The energy and the happiness that he's thinking, I've got no hair, but I don't care. I've got no hair, but I don't care. Is feeling within my very body, mind and soul. And I'm so happy to share this happiness with you because happiness is contagious. It's like a contagious disease that we finally all want. But on the flip side, moodiness is just as contagious. Now, any of you, if you just put your hands up in the air, if you're in a relationship with a man or a woman, uh, you'll all know. Well, let's picture the scene. Imagine I come home and I open the door and I say this, Hi honey, I'm home. It's a beautiful day. The birds are flying, the sun is shining and I love you. You're the most beautiful woman in the world. I just want to marry you. I love, I love, I love you. I'm so happy. And then you get this back. Now you can't even understand the words. They sound like this in your brain. <coughs> Mood. That's called mood. Uh, and what that cause and effect is that then I'm into that mood. And I feel moody. Now the trick is, the trick that I've learned is bounceability. Now I learned this from entertaining children. That if you can bounce back as quick as you can and bring other people up to that mood that you want to be in, you feel great about it. And it, it's cause and effect. Happiness is a circle. You've got to give it to get it back. Look... I quickly learned as an entrepreneur that there were so many setbacks along the way. And for me to be a successful entrepreneur, I needed to quickly bounce back as quick as I could to become a successful leader. I started making a vision for my life and a decision, a decision, and that's where it all starts, folks, a decision that I was going to lead a happy life. And I really passionately believe until you make that decision that you want to lead a happy life, nothing else will work. But once you've made that decision, everything just clicks into place. And that's what I so passionately believe because all of the things that happen as an entrepreneur, then you get the knockbacks, you lose money and things go wrong. If you don't bounce back, you're not a very good leader. You've got to maintain a happy state, a happy moral, a happy attitude, and that gets attracted back to you. By sharing that vision, I attracted great people to come and work for me. People that I believe are greater than me because they understood my vision. They bought into me and I shared it and I, and I wanted to be a great leader and I worked on it. See, I worked on happiness because I think it's actually quite hard work to stay happy constant because life deals us what I like to call poop. <laughs> And it's how quick we bounce back from poop, how quick we bounce back from <laughs> is how better we can be, how we can become happier people. Look, I, I brought some happy props with me because I want to find a way of sharing happiness with the audience today. How we can make happiness bounce from back to back to back. Now, look, look this is one of my favourite happy props. Oh, has anyone got any children? Raise your hands if you've got any children. Because one of the way of... Um, uh, can you just keep your hand up if you've got a child between the age of one and seven? And keep your hands up if you've got a daughter. Who's got a daughter? You've got a daughter, sir? How old is she? Four. Fabulous, fabulous. And uh, does she like Barbies? No. no. Okay, let's... Uh, thanks. 
Thanks for wasting my time. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, another baldy. And I need someone else that's, uh, that's got a daughter that uh, likes Barbies or likes. Now, look, a way of spreading happiness. Uh, so can you just stand up for me, sir? Thank you very much. Look at this fine Chippendale there. Now, you see, uh, I, the act of giving makes people happy. And it makes me really happy, uh, like, giving things. And I want to give you, and I'm going to give you a present, a Barbie to take home to your child when you get home. And I just didn't know that she'll be... Wow, Dad's bought me a Barbie home. I'm so happy about it. And it's a little experiment. I just want to give it to you right now. Um, you're going to have to help her light it because uh, I don't want her to burn herself. But if you could just take that, pass that back to that hunky man. You know, that very fact that she'll be happy that, that you've given her that little gift. Thank you very much, sir. Look, look, this is one of my other happy props. It's a giant eight-foot inflatable one. Now, this just makes me happy looking at it. You know what I mean? Look, look, I'm just going to throw it into the audience. If we can work it to the back of the room, that would be lovely. Come on, work together as an audience while I get the next happy prop ready. Keep moving it back. It'll make me happy. Keep moving it back. Yes, yes. Move it back. Move it back. Leave it on the back seat. It just gets energy going. Look at the laughter that's rippling over there as you look so stupid. I said, no, to the back. Work together as a community. Oh, my God. Three million unemployed and they all ended up here. Okay, I said, anyway, sir. Well, that worked really well, didn't it? Okay, maybe we can edit that bit out. That'd be lovely. No, no, this is my favourite happy prop. Now, you can get this. What's your name, madam? Jenny, lovely to meet you. I'm James. Now, Jenny, have you always wanted to be a snowman? Great. And um, this is my favourite happy prop. You just aim it at someone and you turn them into a snowman. That's it. You just say, that's it. Take it, love. Yeah, brilliant. She feels so great that she's now a snowman. Absolutely fantastic. Give her a round of applause. Happiness and energy is contagious and we've just got to work together. Stop moaning about it. Get over it. Bounce back, my love. Your hair looks fine. Now, why did you dye your roots black for TEDx? Is that something special? Sorry. Now, oh, build a bridge. Get over it. Bounce back. Now, happiness is contagious and I just want all of you to share it. Now, I want to give you a little synopsis now of a problem that I face. Now, you're probably thinking this bloke with the exuberant personality is just happy all the time. No, the beginning of my life was not the greatest and I suffered with some stuff, but I'd made that decision that I wanted to be a happy person. I left home when I was about 17 years old and I carried on to build my business and I'd made that decision that I was going to be happy. That's what I really want everyone to understand. And what happened was... When I was about 26, I had everything. And I, I tell you, I had, a, I had a sports car. I had a house in England. And I had a house in Spain. I had all the money I could ever want. I had great friends. But something happened. I woke up one morning and I felt this unbelievable amount of anxiety here. And the worst thing was I couldn't explain why I was feeling it. I just, I just couldn't understand it. It was like it was like I was on a cliff, and I don't really like heights. I don't like rides or anything like that. And it was like I was on a cliff, and I was about to fall off, and I had no safety harness. I just I couldn't work it out. I, I reached out to a friend of mine, and I said, "Look, I don't feel great." And, I, and the worst thing is, I can't explain to you why I don't feel great. The irony was, at the time, I was entertaining millions of customers coming through the doors of all of our businesses. I was out performing, entertaining, doing all of these things, making everyone else happy, but I didn't feel happy inside. Now, bounce ability taught me that I need to bounce back, but I couldn't work it out. It was a big problem. It was a big amount of... <laughs> I couldn't do it on my own, so I reached out to the world, and I'll tell you now, guys, you reach out, and usually help comes. And this friend said to me, he says, you've got to go and see someone for some help. I just looked at him, I said, do you know about me? I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entertainer. I'm Professor Happy Sappy Duda. I don't need help like that. And you know what he said to me? He said, you've got to build over yourself get over your stupid, egotistical ways and go and get the help you needed. And I did, ladies and gentlemen. And it's one of the first times I've said this en masse to anyone. I went and saw a counsellor for a year. It was like a coach. I just saw it as a coach. If I wanted to be a great Olympian, I need a coach to help me. 
And it really helped me. I'm a big advocate of this. And we worked together for a year to sort me out. Now, once I'd got through that phase, I had the great life, I had everything. But then, then I fell in love with the most amazing woman ever, straight away, as soon as I'd finished that year. Uh, and we're together, we're going to have children, we could get married. Everything got better because I'd made that decision to be happy. And I made sure that I got the tools to help me get through that. The second part of this little part of the story is... My mum had a profound effect on me. Now, my mum was really ill. I never lived with my mum. Um, she died when I was really young. And she had a really cruel disease called MS, multiple sclerosis. And every year, she got more and more sick. And this cruel disease robbed my mum of some of life's most basic life-living wants. For example, this. The ability to walk. The ability to scratch your head. And the worst one of all, the ability to cuddle your own children and tell you that you love them. Because she couldn't do that, because every year she got more sick and, and, and the pain was taken from her arms. And she just got so, so sick. What is been that happened? And, and it just had a, a profound effect on me, because what she could do is she could enter a room and she could bring it to life. She could bring it to life. She had this amazing sense of bounceability. And because of that, she didn't have anything, but she left the best inheritance on me. She had the best inheritance. The feeling of being able to get through life, and no matter how bad you think it is, she could just bounce back. She could raise tons of money for charity, organise amazing birthday parties, even better than I could, and I believe I'm quite an expert at that. She just had this amazing sense of getting things done no matter what happens. And she says to me, no one has a right to be unhappy because if they can walk, if they can talk, and if they can cuddle their own children, they've won, haven't they? Because people think that there's things in life that make us happy, like money namely, and it just isn't. Money's a great tool to give you happy things, but you've got to have the right mindset first. Otherwise, it's a very destructive thing. Guys, I just want to leave you with this last final thought that is, life's fast and time's short, and we need to make the most of our life, and we need to share great things, and happiness is the thing that we can all share. No matter where we come from or what we've got, we can do it. And that's what I want to leave you with. And I thank you so much for listening to me. and loved you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>